Okay, here we go. Well, hello, hello. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Fine, thank you. How are you? Well, we're here. So, you know, <laughs> it's like 99% of everything, right? Yes, sir. You got to show up. That's right. Not pushing daisies yet. Nope. Thank goodness. Yeah. So you uh, you had quite an experience at your doctor's office, I guess. You know, you uh, you saw that framed photo. Yeah, that is our favorite physician that's retiring. All of Fred's doctors are retiring, but this one is one of the dearest to mm -hmm. us because it's been so helpful. Okay. And uh, you, I was following directions. You said take your take your art with you, and mm -hmm. so I did, and there it was. So. It was very difficult uh, to try to make uh, colored watercolor pencils look like a photo, but I tried it anyway. It was interesting. Mm -hmm. So in looking at what you submitted, um, it doesn't look like you wet it. Well, I, I did wet it. I did it um, with two layers of colored pencil, the first layer was the watercolor mm -hmm. that I wet down, and that, that looked so faint, I went back over it with a regular colored pencil. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would kind of have suggested that you not go to the colored pencil over it, that you right. go back and you add more layers of the watercolor pencil. Yeah. And build that, it up. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's good. I was afraid that, um, well, like I said, I hadn't used that before. I was afraid I wasn't going to get the intensity of the mm -hmm. bright yellows with the type of, so what I have is a, a set of Crayola, mm -hmm. Crayola brand watercolor pencils that I got for our grandchildren, and they've just been sitting there. Nobody's mm -hmm. ever used them, so. Mm -hmm. uh, it looked awfully light, but you're yeah. right. I think I'll, I'll make another attempt at it and then try just to use that and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, what you might try is rather than doing a piece of artwork, just take some of the random colors, do little squares. Right. And then, and then you know, dilute them with water and then let that dry and go back in and, and build up the color and see how saturated you can get with it. Excellent yeah. idea. Yeah, that Excellent would take. Idea. Yeah, that would take less time than right. Then <laughs> drawing doing a thing. whole big thing and then trying to fill in the whole thing. Yes. Right, but okay. you know, I mean, you know, and 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 I'll I'll say this again. You know, when we get around to looking at your work, but my but my first impression was that the only thing what you needed to do was you just needed to build up more color and particularly in the darks because you didn't have the contrast. Right. And that was another issue. I didn't have that I didn't have the color that was the dark green of the leaves. So mm -hmm. that's why I added the additional uh colored pencil because they were darker. But I'll yeah. I'll go back and try what you said. That's it's very easy right. to do. Yeah, but with your with your watercolor pencils, you know, you don't have to use just one color. You can actually mix them. Right. By layering. So Yeah, that's use, what I'm gonna do with the little squares. Yeah. Yeah. So you could okay. add blue or a dark brown. Alexa, like stop. Or, you know, maybe even black to a green. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, or you know, like a very dark blue with some yellow to build your own green um, and just experiment, you know, with kind of the result you get, you know, okay. from, from doing that. Because I, I think, I'm pretty sure you could push the value much darker. You're, mm -hmm. you're just not going to be able to do it with like one single color, maybe. Right. You'd have to combine a darker color. Mm -hmm. And um, with the colored pencils, I have a dark green, I have an olive green, but I'm, I'm real curious now about going back and then experimenting with just 
the watercolor pencils to see if I can combine green and black or green and brown. Right. See what happens. Or even green and purple. Green and purple. Okay. Yeah. That. Um, yeah. Now that will that will mute it as well. If you right. add purple, it's going to get a, a duller sort of green. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure that you can build it up. And on the piece that you've already done, you know, once you've done that sort of little experiment on the blocks, um, you might try going back and working in over the colored pencil that you already have down. Okay. Okay, that's a great idea. Yeah, and see, you know, I mean, if you haven't totally sealed the surface of the paper. Right, you know, right. <laughs> You, yeah. you, should, you should be able to maybe layer some darker color over it with the watercolor right. as well. Okay. okay? Yes, sir. Thank you for those, those good suggestions. Um, I will follow up. Okay. Well, just, you know, see what happens. It's an experiment. You know, we're going to be talking about lots of experiments today. So, okay. so let's see. How, wow, we got good. Six old people here. Okay, so John's here, or Mondo's here, Susan is here, Bob, and Rebecca. How's everybody doing? All right, all right. Yeah, okay. John's not talking to us yet. He's still muted. Uh, how are you doing, Bob? I'm hanging in there. Okay. okay. <laughs> Yeah, you sent me some more watercolor. I'm, I'm sorry, not watercolor, but marbled paper samples. And yep. uh, yeah, those are really different in in sort of the, the feel and the nature of the first that you did. Mm -hmm. you know, they seem to be a little more subtle. So, Well, it's interesting because uh, I, I'm trying that, uh, what was it, P, PFK paper? What was mm -hmm. it? Uh, and and it is much more absorbent than the uh, than the paper the the paper that came with the kit. Mm -hmm. And so the first first one I did I, I did the did the um, uh, alum treatment, mm -hmm. and it it really it didn't have a good coat of alum on it. So I had to go back and retreat it again to get a better better coat on it. It's really sucked it up again. But but the ones I didn't send you. <laughs> um, which I'll send you send you later. Mm -hmm. um, this is that 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 P, was the PFK? Is that right? Paper? I'm not sure. Um, anyway, it's it, uh, you suggested it a while, long time ago, uh, to, for for a pastel. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, you're talking. Yeah. Okay, the Reeves BFK. Right. Oh, yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Um, and and so uh, uh, having a really really good coat of alum on it. Uh, makes a difference as far as it, it 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 being able to retain the color on the yeah, paper sure. when you rinse it off. Yeah, I'm sure it would. <laughs> yeah, yeah that 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 particular paper is kind of heavy. You know, I'm you know in comparison, you know, to to try to do marbling with. But yeah, it would be interesting to see the kind of result you get out of that. Because if you get a good result out of it, um, the paper itself is archival. And it's going to last for right. a really long time. And it's really flexible as to the kind of media that you can put over it there. May I interject something? Uh, sure. um, so the papers that I was familiar with before even trying to do marbling that were marbleized were those that were in the uh, front cover and the first page of classical literature. Mm -hmm. And if you go back and look at those old, old books, that they are there. And I think the paper in those had to be heavy. So, Bob, if you want to make a book, you, you're you on the way. <laughs> well, all I have to do is figure out the words between the front cover and the back cover, that's all. <laughs> but it'll look beautiful. <laughs> Well, Bob, you know, there's always the, always that thing called a collaboration, where you do well, the visual, sure. yeah, where you do the visual design and somebody else does the work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, 
Yeah, you just have to find a writer. So that's all. That's all I have to do. <laughs> that's all. You know, it's simple, right? Yeah, but I just <laughs> right. But it's got to be a good. It's got to. It's got to be a good writer. It can't be just an average writer. It's got to be a good writer. <laughs> yes, the better the better the writer. Yes. Right, and we have a lot of good writers in that writing group at Benson. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're great, but I know they're good because I've been to some of those classes that they had and some of them are marvelous yeah yeah all righty well let's get rocking and rolling here okay um hmm. so we're gonna start looking at some artwork and uh yeah we might as well start from the top work the way Bob, you win the award today for turning in the most work. How's that? Okay. All right. That's terrific. Mm -hmm. I love that, Bob. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now, this is a uh, dinner. This is a little diner that mm -hmm. was done down in Naples, Florida. And mm -hmm. I, I did a, I did a quick little, it was went there for breakfast and I did a quick little thumbnail uh, and then, then went back and did a watercolor of it. Uh, okay. So. And and was the watercolor? Is that something you've you've done this recently, right? Oh, no, no, no. This this is old. Plus, this is this is line. Also, I did a, a line. And... Okay. All right. So so then you did the line work first, and you basically used the watercolor to just fill in. Right. Each right. of the areas. Okay. Right. right. So yeah, it's kind of that line and wash approach. Right. Okay. All right. Let's see. Good job, Bob. Uh, oh, and then, yeah. Yeah, Bob? Uh, uh, no, I just, uh, L LB just, just said nice, oh. so I just said thank you. Oh, okay. All right. uh, and then we have uh, this piece that you framed now and um uh, and this was uh you know uh oil pastels right yes o over your marble paper okay yep. and uh, okay anybody got any comments on this one uh, well no. I, I, have an, I have an affinity for irises we have a granddaughter named iris Oh, <laughs> it is an iris. Yep, it is. Mm. It's an iris, and uh, you know we we talk about the composition on that, and you putting some kind of greenery or something at the More bottom, progress. and it uh, I think it helps. So, mm -hmm. um, but you know, using mm. or basically you know picking up really a lot of the colors from the background um even though the background's like really subtle really does tie it together really really nicely it's it's a it's a really you know beautiful piece of art so now how large is this is this like about the same size sheet that you gave me yeah it's a little bit smaller it's a, what eight eight by ten maybe oh okay all right yeah okay and um in this in this frame, do you do you have it with glass over it? No, nope, no, nope. it's just a. I just because it's on a it's it's mounted on a a, a regular canvas, mm -hmm. and so uh, so I just you know just stuck it in there. I mean I I don't see any reason to to glass it uh, particularly because it is oil pastel and and it's uh, the background is is acrylic, so. Uh, well, the yeah, the pigment on the paper is acrylic. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, I wonder about that because the, the oil pastels dry. I mean, you can you can rub your hand over it. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's like an oil painting at this point. Yeah, and I I wouldn't be that concerned about the the flower itself or moving the pigment around. I guess what I would be concerned about is the fact that it's a paper surface. 
Uh, and it being open like that, uh, it can draw or attract a lot of dust and dirt I very see. quickly. Um, and that's probably why I would treat it a lot like a like a, a hard pastel and put, you know, a spacer in it and then put glass in it so that mm -hmm. the, the glass doesn't sit directly on the paper surface, but there's a, a, you know, a little bit of a gap in there. Okay. And All right. You know, that's, I, I think that's kind of how I would treat that. Um, and I, I think it would help it last, you know, a lot longer that way. You know, just a thought. Okay. Um, you. you know, if you, if you don't put glass over it, you know, I'd be interested to see kind of how it holds up over the years, you know, and what happens to it, you know, as, as time goes on. Yeah. Might, might be a good, uh, you know, a good experiment, you know, just to see how archival it is and, and how, uh, how stable it is. So, mm -hmm. um, looking at, uh, so this is from the Friday class. Okay. okay. We're looking at those, you know, basic, you know, basic shapes. So basically a form for the head, a form for the chest and a form for the hips. And you're roughly getting the idea. Um, you know, the, the chest is, I kind of see it more as a bullet shape. You're, you're kind of treating it like the shoulders are actually part of it. And I wouldn't do that. You know, okay. I, would, I would find the bullet shape. And the reason I, I wouldn't do that is because you're talking about trying to create this illusion of one shape, you know, sitting in front of another. And if you think of what really happens there, you get that bullet shape, which is the rib cage. And then you get these sort of triangular shapes that come out on the points of the shoulder, like here, you know, that move independently, you see? And that's, that's why the shoulder can, you know, do, you know, some kind of odd things, you know, one being much higher and one being much lower. If, if you unify it into one single shape, then what ends up happening is, you know, it becomes sort of rigid and it doesn't, it doesn't have that, that variation or that movement. So like okay. when, when you do something like this, right, where you have the arm, you know, sitting on the outside. See, being able to see that curve in here, you know, to define where the chest is and, and where it really starts to round out, and then where that edge is, see another plane starts in there, and that's part of that arm and that shoulder complex that sit, you know, behind it and into the outside of it. You, do you get what I'm saying? Yep. Okay. So, so yeah, I, I would start kind of breaking them down into separate pieces rather than, you know, just one, one big block. Uh, now, this is your longer drawing. And I think we had, what, like 30 minutes for this? Yeah. Yeah. Was that about it? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you've got... You got the feel of the pose, you've got, you know, the proportions and everything kind of sitting, you know, where it belongs. And you've begun to put some, you know, basic tone in there. Um, and so, you know, you've got all the basic elements and you can see what's going on. And, uh, and it works, you know, it's fine. Now, you know, we could talk about varying your line weight, uh, you know, indicate where light and shadow are uh, more directly. Like for example, you know, the outline on this shoulder, 
you know, could have been maybe thinner and lighter. Same thing with this leg right here, the upper part of it. And again, that would have, you, you have a change in both value and in weight here. So it still works the way it is, you know. It's just, I would have maybe pushed that a little bit to where it was a little bit lighter, you know, and not so strongly stated. Again, so it pushes that or reinforces that idea of that being a rounded form here and here as well. As well as maybe, you know, this, this side of the face, you know, just keeping it a little bit lighter. Again, and it helps it kind of have that illusion of, of turning, okay? Okay. Um, there's another piece of marble paper waiting. Yeah, uh I, I just I just stuck it behind a frame that I have, mm -hmm. and just to see, uh, it's it's going to be I'm going to put the Happy Buddha uh, on this guy. Oh, okay. All right. So this is going to be the Happy Buddha. Okay. Yeah. Um. Now you had well. We'll come to it in a minute. Okay. So uh, I think we had seen. Well, I, have you done this? Wash. You, yeah, I think I probably may have sent this to you a long time ago. Okay. Uh, but now, but you, we were talking about line and wash the other day. Uh -huh. so just thought I'd bring this back up. Uh, okay. So I, I've got a, a weird question for you. It's like this, this blue arrow. I have no idea where that is. That's not, that's not on the, that, that's not on my paint, my, my picture. <laughs> Okay. Are, you showing, are you showing perspective? No, no, I, I, that, that blue arrow is not part of my <laughs> well, so. Charles, isn't that strange? Yeah, I mean, somehow it ended up in your photo. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know how. Okay, I'm, you know. But I was looking at that like, well, you know, that looks almost mechanical. And it's like, you know, I, I wonder why he added that in there. <laughs> it's like, okay, so what's that about? <laughs> just, just to confuse everybody, that's what I did okay. before. Well, you were successful, you did. You you definitely stopped me and like, what is that all about? Okay. It's, it's color coordinated. Well, it, it does, it kind of it kind of goes with the color of things in the paint. <laughs> I was like, okay, what is that about? All right, so it's a mystery. How we got it, it is a mystery. Okay, well, and so it will continue to be a mystery, but okay. Um, you know, as far as the line and the wash part, you know, I mean, you know, that part works um, perfectly fine. I just, you know, I just got a little thrown off by the blue area. <laughs> blue area is like, okay, what's he trying to tell me here? Um, <laughs> You know, same thing here. Okay, so you got some figures. They're they're walking down the street. It's a rainy day. You're getting the reflections, you know, on the pavement or the sidewalk, and uh, you know, you're conveying the idea perfectly fine. Okay, and this looks like um, maybe you use like a fine line pen for the yes. Outline. Yep. Okay. So now I have to ask you. Um, did you do the drawing first, or did you, in fact, do the color first and then do the drawing over that? Did the drawing first. Okay, you did the drawing first. Yeah. Um, just for those of you who are out there listening, and you know, in, in the case you might be interested, you can go either way. You could actually you know, do uh, the paint first and, you know, just get in big color blocks and things like that, let the paper dry, and then do your drawing over it, you know, um, as, as kind of like a final layer. So either, either one's fine. You can approach it, you know, either way. I find myself that doing the color first and just putting in sort of, you know, where I think the color is gonna be and setting up the value structure um, really helps me 
um, be a little more deliberate about the drawing itself. So you, you can go either way, like I said. So Charles, are you saying that if you had done this, this drawing, mm -hmm. that you would, have, you would have done, of course, the black in the background and the gray in the sides, Mm -hmm. And maybe the the uh, kind of a uh, mustard color for where the windows are, and then you would have put in the people and the details of the colors on the umbrella. Yeah, I would have. And, I would have put all my color and value shapes in. Right. Un until I figured that I had the composition, the structure, the way I wanted it, and then I would have spent more, you know, more time on the drawing. Right. To, you know, to basically overlay those colors. You know? And um, in, in particular, if I were using like a fine line pen, um, you know, as, as the outline, you know, that's kind of the approach I would take. And one of the reasons I would do that is that my success rate with fine line pens um, <laughs> decreases greatly when I start putting uh, water washes over them, because mm -hmm. some of them are oh, no. yeah. not permanent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so the the ink tends to diffuse sometimes. Yeah. Um, you know, now some some pens are actually resistant to water, and they they won't break down and bleed. But you really got to test your pens and make sure, you know, what they actually do, you know, yeah. when they come in contact with water. Like a, a magic marker would mm -hmm. probably not fade. Well, a uh, magic marker would fade. Really? Yeah. Oh. Now, will it, will it dissolve in water? No. But it's, it's not color fast. It's not permanent. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but like if you get one, like one of the little Pintel pens or something like that, most of those have uh, what they call permanent ink in them and, right. you know, are kind of designed not to fade over time. So. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Okay. So here's, here's one of your marble paper pieces. And this mm -hmm. is really different. You know, because it's uh oh wow, it looks like waves. Yeah, it, well, it almost makes like a a landscape or or seascape all by itself. Really? Well, that was my intent. Pardon? That was my intent. That was your intent. Okay. Well, you know, it worked out. Uh, <laughs> I mean, those could be like blue mountains, you know, with with a green forest in front of it, and a and a kind of a a gray, you know, a grayish, but light sky. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it makes, it really does, you know, kind of make a picture all by itself, you know, without anything added to it. Um, then you have this piece. Oh, that, 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 that particular one was one of the uh, um, Reeves papers. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so that's why it's not as bright because it's probably like a kind of a grayish mm -hmm. Reeves. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, it was it was a tan color Reeves. Uh, okay. All right. But it's 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 really it's really kind of eerie how it looks three dimensional. It does. Yes. Yeah. Really right. kind of like there are really like waves you know, coming from right. and, yeah. and coming out at you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean it's it's a great optical illusion all all on its own. Um did you paint these, did you pour it or you bought the paper marble or how, how did it, how did this come about? Um this is done by a technique called marbling. Yeah. And and it's a it's a it's a two-day process that you have to go through in order to to get it but actually you lay paint on top of a thick liquid and then you lay your paper down on top of the thick liquid and before you lay your paper down you can do little these designs and things 
in, in the in the uh, in the paint, and then because the paint is directly on the surface of the liquid that you have on there, it it will transfer to the paper. And, uh, so, Barbara, you um. I mean, you almost have to look at a video of it to understand it because there's so many steps, but it's really yeah. fascinating. That, I agree, Rebecca. I agree. Yeah. So Bob's tried to explain it. I've tried to explain it. And it's almost like you have to experience it or else watch it to understand yes. it. many steps. Yeah. Well, watching, watching somebody do it, um, in a lot of cases, um, unless they take the time to really explain step by step what they're actually doing, um, you know, you can you can miss big parts of it. Uh, so, yeah, you know, like the one video that we watched, you know, that sort of inspired all you guys to to try this. She did a very good, you know, I think she did a very good job at you know, explaining most of the process. You um, did, I agree. You know, but you know, most, most of those instructional videos are, are not quite as complete, you know, as, as what she had done. So, but you guys are getting some amazing results, you know, really nice stuff. And I actually like the, the Reeves BFK paper, you know, is is this also a Reeves? Uh, no, that that's uh, the what the Texto print, like a T E X O P R I N T print. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that's that's kind of like one of those wild psychedelic, you know, kind of patterns again. Bob, Bob's getting crazy in his old age. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it, Bob. <laughs> Go for it. It's a great abstract. Sign your name to it and go with it. Yeah, there you go. Don't, uh, yeah, don't hold back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, to me, these can stand on their own as art uh, pieces because they don't need anything put on top of them. Right. They uh, are beautiful as they are. But I have a question. When you're doing uh, different styles of art, should your picture frame match it as far as the style is concerned? Like this is contemporary art, abstract. So there, there, or would it be uh, a simple? frame or no frame or traditional frame? Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's a good question. Um, and I don't know that I have a, a succinct answer for you other than to say that I guess my idea on framing is you want something that complements the art, but you also want something to sort of complement the environment that it's going in. Okay. So like, for example, let's go back. And Bob put this piece of paper in a very traditional looking frame, right? Yes. So it's, it's not real contemporary in feel, but the paper in it itself is fine. And if you have kind of a traditional interior, you know, I think that would be appropriate, you know, and, and fit perfectly. Now, if, if your whole decor is Ikea furniture, maybe not, you know? So it just depends on your personal style and, and the environment that it's going into. Um, you know, now would I say that the frame here complements this piece of paper? Not really, not directly. I mean, they're they're very different. <clears throat> I would think it would need a simplified frame. Well, something that's more, since there's a, a lot of thin lines, something that mm -hmm. will complement it because of the design of the lines. Right, yeah. So if, if you put this very same piece of paper, in like a shadow box frame, mm -hmm. or even in one of those like uh, acrylic acrylic box frames, I think it would work just as well. Um, but when you hung it on the wall, again, you know, maybe that acrylic box frame, unless you have a very contemporary interior, you know, might not fit in. 
where when you hit yeah when you visit art museums the contemporary art if i'm not mistaken has a contemporary feel i mean a frame to it doesn't it and the uh, older pictures the uh, realistic classical realistic uh, paintings have more ornate frames um generally um but a lot of the framing is done based on the period of time when the art was actually produced All right. okay yeah okay. um you know if you go look at uh well okay perfect example if you look at bo bartlett's paintings they're somewhat you know they're somewhat academically traditional but they're such a large scale and you know up until i went down to columbus's last visit i had never seen them in a frame and he treated them you know for years like a contemporary painting and it was a gallery wrap canvas and there were there was no frame on it it was just you know, the sides were painted either gray, black, or white. Um, and then you had the painting on the front surface. When I went down to Columbus's last time, since then, he or some institution or museum has put a frame on a lot of his paintings. Now, if you could imagine you know, you take a painting that's 30, 30 or 40 feet long by, you know, 20 feet tall, and you put a frame on it. You know, um, for the most part, they don't make moldings that would work with painting that size. Right. So the frames that they put on them had to be custom made you know, to be in scale with the painting. And so somebody spent a huge amount of money, and I'm, I'm talking, you know, a huge amount of money, putting a frame on those paintings. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, you know, it's, it's a matter of, it's a matter of your particular taste and the environment that you're going to put it in. You know, for me, when I'm framing something, I try to find a frame that's, you know, complementary to the painting. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to put it in a show. Um, and if it's a very contemporary looking piece of work, a lot of times I don't put a frame on it at all. If it's on a gallery wrap canvas and, and I can just hang it and not put a frame on it, I would always prefer to do that. See, this this one has a this one is on a black canvas that I that I had is what I mounted the paper on, so I could pull it out of the frame and just use the black, uh, and and it pretend it's a it's a gal gallery wrap because it's black all around. So yeah. Uh, now is the uh, is the black that we're seeing here is that the canvas? That's canvas. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So that's not an interior mat in the frame. That's Okay. No, no, that's that's canvas. Oh, okay. So how did how did you attach the uh, the marbleized paper to the canvas? Gel medium. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it, it's a mm -hmm. you know a permanent uh, you know all used glue. <laughs> all used glue. Okay. Yeah, it really is. I mean, yeah, it's not. You know, look. You have uh, artists out there who are attaching, you know, like coins and metal, like bottle caps and pieces of glass and plastic and everything else to canvases with that stuff. And it's, you know, once, once it's on there, it's pretty much so permanent. It's not going to come off. So it's not flour and water like Elmer's glue. It's got something else in it. Um, I, I, yeah, I assume so. Yeah, it's it's pure acrylic. It's pure acrylic. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, 
that's all it is. It's just pure acrylic. And it's got an agent in it to make it thicker. You know, and, and to stop it from changing shape or shrinking. You know, so once it sets, you know, the texture or the layering that you have in it will be there forever. You know, it's it's not going to flatten out on you. Uh, Charles, are you when you say it's acrylic? I know that you can use regular acrylic paint as glue to adhere uh, paper onto mm -hmm. something. So, mm -hmm. is that what you're talking about? Also, that acrylic that you just mentioned is that just pure acrylic paint that we well, paint with? Well, when I say pure acrylic, it's it's the actual liquid form of the acrylic without any pigment. In it. So it'd be the same as the paint we use. Yeah, yeah. The only difference in the paint is that the paint has a pigment added into it, and this doesn't. It's just, you know, it's just the so clear. If I use acrylic as a glue, then it will stick for a long time. Uh, I've used it, but I didn't know how long it would last. Forever. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yes. No, I mean seriously. Yeah, they're, um, well, un unless, you know, unless there's something out there in the universe that eats acrylic or plastic, <laughs> you know, Some kind of bug. yeah, it's, it's pretty safe from now until, you know, you know, eternity. So, yeah, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. That's what aliens eat for lunch. Well, you know, and, 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 you know, when, when we fill up the world with enough acrylic, you know, Palmer, um, maybe we should get a few of them to come over and have lunch, you know, <laughs> so wouldn't be a bad idea, right? At best. All right. <clears throat> so here's another piece of that marble paper, you know, it's beautiful. Yeah, this, this reminds me of butterfly wings. Oh, that's that's cool. Yeah, it's just the, you know, the movement in it and stuff. You know. So your designs are unlimited, right? With this um, process, it, it, they're, they're never going to be two that are uh, exactly alike. And I won't be able to copy yours, right? That's no. correct. <laughs> well, I, I, There's no way. There's no way because. Each one is so individualized. It could come close to that because of the colors you choose, but not the design. Yeah. Now, Bob, let me ask you this. Um, because when they're marbling paper, in many cases, they will pull more than one print. Well, they have to take it from the first one. The first print, and then they'll have to, to uh, to basically reproduce that particular print, uh, digitize it or whatever these days. I don't know how they did it before in the old days when they were doing books. Uh, well, that's but, the thing. Uh, I mean, they, okay. And I'm, I'm not an expert on marbling by any means, okay? Um, but my understanding was that once you got a pattern, you could pull multiple sheets. Well, well, in in a way, I mean, you you can you can use maybe exactly the, exactly the same colors and try to place them on the the uh, the surface in mm -hmm. similar ways, and then use your tools that you have uh, similar. Mm -hmm. It won't be exact. It'll be you can make it close, but because you can make things, they have standard patterns that they have, like uh, peacock. Pattern is one. Bird wing pattern is another. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. There's there's about five or six patterns that that are kind of uh, st standard patterns. And if you learn to use the tools properly, you can make them pretty close. And if you use the same paint colors, that you know they they won't be exact, but they may be similar. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. Okay, look into that more. That's a lot of work, though, to do that, I would think. Oh, it is. <laughs> so here's your, uh, this is one of your Buddhas, right? This is, this is um, the um, uh, Confucius. All right. Oh, right. 
Yeah, yeah. I don't think Buddha would be carrying a bow. No. Yeah, that's a bow and a fan, right? I Buddha think so. it's hard to tell what it is in the in the original reference drawing that I or picture that I have. Okay. All right. And I guess my question is. You made him black for what reason? Basically, I started off to try to do a monochromatic uh, of him, uh, but then uh, looking at the, the actual photograph, and it's it's got a couple of tones in it, but it it's it's a statue. I took a picture of a statue of, okay. of him, and the statue was uh, the 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 dark grayish brownish colors in it, and so that's that's what. That's what I took my reference from. Okay. All right. So yeah, it was Tomorrow. a culture that was like a dark, almost like a obsidian or some kind of dark. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. That normalized paper in the background, is that the same one that you just, that uh, Charles just showed? Mm -mm. It no, like that was, it's one of the first ones that I did. No. Uh, and it, the designs are very tiny compared to the others. Yes, you yeah, use uh, your fine comb. Um, uh, to create that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can teach us a lot, Bob. Oh, hey. <laughs> just, just call me Professor Bob, that's all. <laughs> so, Bob, it does, look, it does look like it's made of stone. Uh -huh. you, you achieved yeah. that very well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's still a work in progress. I've got a long way to go on it yet. But, uh, it's, it's coming along. All right. Now, this is oil on top of it, or? What kind of paint? Uh, yeah, this is this is oil. Yes. Okay. All right. So you're, uh, it was you're Davies Davies Gray mainly. Okay. So Williamson William Williamson Williamsburg. Paint. Yeah. Williamsburg paint. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're doing the same thing I was doing, you know, which is, and this is what I did Sunday. I went to a life group over at Shane McDonald's and I laid down a piece of Bob's paper onto a canvas using uh, acrylic gesso as a base for my glue. Uh, and I did this actually while the class was happening. Um, so I, I laid the paper down uh, fairly quickly and then let it dry for a while before we started the long pose. And so <clears throat> I didn't get it absolutely smooth. I got a few wrinkles, but, but, um, but then during the painting process, and this is oil paint, you know, over the paper. Um, and the paper ended about two thirds of the way down. Let's see where, here it is. Yeah, right, right about in here. And then from there, I, I just continue the color down to give a suggestion that the paper keeps, you know, going. Do and you have a chance? Pardon? Somebody? <clears throat> okay, I don't know. Anyway, um, and this isn't finished by any means, you know, but, uh, you know, but it worked really well. And it's it's really fun, you know, actually having sort of a, a background kind of already down and working with a subject and trying to figure out, okay, you know, how are you going to place that subject, you know, on the page, you know, to create like an interesting composition and stuff like that. Um, and that was really kind of the challenge. And it, you know, when I when I had the piece of paper down, I knew that what I wanted to preserve of the paper was really this central area right here, you know, because everything kind of pulls, you know, into that point and that kind of makes a focal point already. And so by placing the figure, you know, and, and really her head right next to it seemed to be sort of a logical you know, solution there. And, um, and you know, she, she had done a pose very similar to this when we were doing the gestures. And when she took the long pose, you know, I asked her to kind of do something somewhat, and she, she did, and this is what we ended up with. But, uh, 
I thought it worked out really well. So anyway, we'll we'll get back to stuff I was doing in a little bit. Uh, let's talk about Eloise. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So this oh, wow. is over cool. at Heritage Park, and uh, Eloise was all off by herself, you know, down there in, in the corner of the park. Uh, she, she picked a nice little scene of the gazebo mm -hmm. and then yeah. the uh, bridge, you know, over the little creek that runs through there, you know, from the spring. And yeah, I think you, you know, you've got a nice sense of form and depth in really, you know, kind of like the lower half of the painting right here. And the only thing I would, you know, kind of say to you is that I would go back and I would try to push these trees up here, or most of them, you know, uh, I would try to push them back in the background. Which is pointing at push back. How would, you, how would you do that, Charles? Uh, mute the color, you know, maybe mm -hmm. make it, maybe make it grayer and maybe lighter in value because I know that there are some darker leaves in there as well that are closer to us. But, you know, those areas where you can see all the way back across the park, you know, just, you know, lower the intensity, but also probably lighten the value a little bit. Wait, do you want me to put the uh, print imprints of the tree, the tree trunks and things back there or something? I, I don't understand. No, 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 no. It's like, see the tree trunks up here? Mm -hmm. I would leave it alone, but in between here, let's say this looks like, you know, there's some foliage, you know, that's attached to this tree trunk, right? Mm -hmm. So the little spaces, you know, that we see through mm -hmm. uh, the trees that are behind the gazebo, Okay. You know, like maybe like right in here or, you know, back in here. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's the area that I would mute and lighten in value. Mm -hmm. Okay, you told me they were kind of uh, intense, I guess, and I did mm -hmm. darken them, but now you're telling me to to mute them some more? Yeah, but darkening them doesn't necessarily mean that you're muting them. It was a very it only changes sure. the value, okay. right? And what we wanted to do is we wanted to change the intensity and maybe even the temperature, right? Okay. Because yeah. where you were standing, it's like all of the leaves and things that were on the trees that were around you, mm -hmm. they were all sort of backlit. And so the color of those were, they were fairly dark, but they were fairly cool. And because they were closer to you, they were relatively intense, right? Like all of this area right in here, okay? Well, the leaves up here were about the same, but the mm -hmm. trees that were across the park from you, you know, where you could see through the leaves, Mm -hmm. they, they can't be the same intensity and the same value, okay? okay? There has to be some difference there because there's some atmospheric perspective there, right? So, and so, uh -huh. All right, so tell me again what I need to do because I okay. lost in all that. So, so like if you took this green, which is basically like a sap green. I don't see your arrow. Um, up here in the upper right hand corner. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, if this is an open space, right, and, you, and it's a tree that's back across the park from us, mm -hmm. you know, it, you can start with a sap green as a basic green, but I would mix gray, right? It's probably, you know, if this is about a number five or a number six value, then I would probably make it about a number four value, okay? Number four value and lower the intensity as a gray, okay? All right, okay. Um, 
and you might even throw maybe a little bit of yellow or something in that mixture and make mm. it warmer because there was sunlight, you know, and all of this stuff back here where all of this stuff up in here was in shadow, right? And so I would keep my, the foliage that was in the middle ground closer to me, darker and cooler. And then I would keep all of the stuff that was across the green, you know, in the park, um, you know, maybe lighter and warmer and more muted. Does that kind of make sense? A little, I'll have to bring it and let you point it out to me more. Okay. Um, let's see. Today is Tuesday. You know, are you going to be here tomorrow? Uh, no, probably not because I have another class in the morning. I have another obligation in the morning. Oh, okay. All right. Are you going to be, are you going to be there on Monday? Okay, I can make a, I can, I, I tell you, I'll just come tomorrow morning at what time? I mean, beginning of the class? Or? Yeah, yeah. What I'll do is, is I'll, I'm going to try to do like a little kind of, like a, I'm going to basically copy your painting. Okay. In a rough kind of way, but I'm okay. going to make those color changes. All right, that's fine. Okay. Should I send you a photo or anything? If you would, that'd be great. All right. Okay. So, I have a question for the uh -huh. uh, for Eloise. Eloise, I haven't walked in that part of the trail in a couple of years, and I didn't know that there was a little. Is that a drainage pipe or a waterfall? That puts well, that's water. waterfall. Charles found it. I hadn't noticed it either, but it was there. It wasn't that large though. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's cool. I, I'll have to go look at it now. Thank you for showing it to us. Yeah, that's that's kind of another little uh, branch of the creek from right. the, uh, you know, from where the uh, spring is. Right. That trickles off into that. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really pretty spot. It was really nice. So. Yeah. All right. So let's let's. This is John. And uh, this is a watercolor, right, John? That's pretty. That, yeah, correct. That okay. Is pretty. So, mm -hmm. where where is this from? Can we ask? My head. <laughs> from your head. Okay. From my head. I I had looked at uh, some of the pictures you sent from one of the parks. Uh -huh. uh, you had done a plain air on, and I know there's water and there's bridge and foliage, uh, but I didn't want to just do one individual picture that you had sent, so I just sort of worked that up out of my head from the different parts, and did some little thumbnails, and then uh, came up with this, and I, I violated some of the prime rules, I know, when I did it. Yeah, what, what prime rules did you violate? I think the tree right in the exact middle of the page. <laughs> that, that might be one. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, the, um, the tree on the left doesn't quite seem to fit into me. Now I look at it now again. Mm -hmm. On the right, the, the, the right, the, the corner on the right. Yeah. It, seem, it seems a little bit stunted in comparison to the one in the middle, doesn't it? Yeah, right, right. And yet it's closer to us. Correct. Yeah, because it sits lower in the, the picture frame. So, right. and not that you couldn't have a smaller tree closer to you. You could, in fact, you know. True. All right. Um, okay. So we're still trying to play with that wet on wet and, 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 and dropping color into wet, the wet paper and into other colors. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I, I guess um I guess what I would tell you about that, okay, is that if you're gonna take that approach, right, then you're gonna have to wet your paper and now this is this is is this like on a block 
or is it loose? No, no, this well, uh, it was, but it's not. It's off now. I took it off. Sorry. <laughs> okay, but I'm saying why you painted it? Was it on the block or was it loose? Uh, uh, it was loose. Okay. All right. So if it's if it's loose, you're gonna have to tape the edges down. Right. Right. No, and then let it kind of like dry a little bit so it can pull tight. And then from there, you're gonna have to kind of work area by area and shape by shape and do, you know, layer your color and drop in the color you want uh, so that it sort of mixes and gets the effect. <laughs> um, because it seems like what's happening to me is that you're wetting the paper, but then you're doing a lot of like brush work over it. Um, right. Rather than like, you know, figuring out what the shape of that tree is, you know, and laying that in and wetting it, and then, you know, layering and dropping your color in to create the foliage. It seems like mm -hmm. the, like paint leaves. You know, like yeah, I did. I, yeah, I let I did let it dry, and then I went over. That, but, but yeah, try, trying to get more detail looking. Yeah. Okay, and you can do that, but you you kind of got to start off with designing sort of the shape of that tree, and then just okay, dropping your color in it first. Right. And okay. And and just putting in like a few little indications of lights or darks, kind of create that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and don't don't like overdo it so that's that's kind of the the thing about watercolor um you know because you what what you're trying to do here is you're trying to create what you would call active and passive areas right and mm -hmm. an, active, an active area you know might be this tree and you know the walkway area which you know, you've got sharper edges and things there, and, and that that helps, you know, because that draws your eye to your focal point. Uh, right. And you've kept this softer, which is good because that helps that sit back away from it. So, you know, you're, you're doing a couple of things really well, which is you're creating these layers and depth in the painting. Um, but it, it's like you're not, if you're going to do that wet and wet, then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you, you got to get a little bit wetter and a little bit looser, you know, in those okay. and start thinking more in big shapes. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is a smaller sheet. This is a nine by 12. I have, I had the, the, the bound pads, but it's in a bigger, bigger size. And I didn't, mm -hmm. For some, whatever reason, I didn't want to do the big size. I wanted it small. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's fine. You know, um, but you know, it's it's good to see that you're experimenting. You know, with with mm -hmm. how to approach that, and you know, this particular piece. You know, you you can see a couple of things where you could actually take and apply that to later paint, right? Right. Because, you know, you, you do have some depth in here. Um, you definitely have harder edges against softer edges. Okay. Um, and that works really well. And those are the things you want to keep. And then you want to learn how to kind of control them, get them where you want. And, uh, you know, to help, you know, keep, mm -hmm. keep your focus. Um, so... I guess that's, anybody else got anything to say? Before we move I on? I like the pictures, they're very colorful. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the color ranges, I like the value ranges, I like the hard soft contrast in a lot of it, okay. And you said that you, um, now did you do like little thumbnails before you did this painting? Yeah, I gotta say there were, because I say I looked at several different pictures. So uh, this is sort of a composite of different elements. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
but did you did you take the time to do a little thumbnail and kind of figure out your composition? Right. Correct. Yes, I did a couple a couple of different ones. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, because if if in doing those, you know, if you laid in some value along with, you know, that little thumbnail and, and got some uh -huh. lights, you know, you, you would have probably seen, you know, the relationship between these two, um, you know, and, and kind of figured that out. Because that's, that's kind of where you would, you know, figure that stuff out you know, in the thumbnail. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Rather than in the painting. Yeah. Um, and particularly with like watercolor, because of the nature of the paint itself and the fact that. Correct. You correct. Know, yes. You <laughs> kind of got, you know, you, you can manipulate it a little bit, but for all intents and purposes, you kind of got one shot. <laughs> you know, <Yep. laughs> that's right. <laughs> and it's like after it goes, after it starts going south, well, it just goes south. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. It's hard to reel it back in. Um, yeah, because that's because I did go back several times, and I probably overworked it uh, than trying to salvage it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's that's where you know doing like little thumbnails and and you know mm. taking it one step further. And then yeah. take the thumbnail that you feel works best, and then doing like a little color study of it, you know. Ah, uh, okay, okay. On a small scale, and trying to figure that out before you get into the big piece, you know, would really be helpful, you know. Okay, and, I didn't. I never thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that would be the next, the next step. Yeah. Again, you know, resolve everything you can before you get mm -hmm. in. To committing yourself to doing something bigger, you know, because uh, you can you can save yourself, you know, a lot of headaches. You know, <laughs> yes. In in doing that stuff. So anyway, all right. Um, so let's talk to Rebecca. I'm here. Yep. Now Rebecca had gone to her doctor's office, and she's, you know. <laughs> Well, you, not. you. Yeah, he is my doctor too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, well, your husband's. Doctor. Our doctor's office. All but right. I took right. That's where we were yesterday. Well, yes, and and you took this photo, which is hanging in the waiting room or the office, right? In his yes, in the room where we saw the doctor. This is where the this is where the picture was hanging. Okay, and and you had your your stuff with you you know, your art materials. And from that, you did this. Now, did you do this while you were on site there? No, all I got, all I had time to do before we got a visit from the doctor, of course, was just to do um, an outline and maybe, oh, and I took a photo. Okay, yeah, all right. So, so in fact, you did start it right there, you know, looking, yes. okay, mm -hmm. all right. Now, in looking at the two, you know, this being the photo, and this being, you know, what she did, you know, final piece, and this is with those watercolor pencils, and then you said that you came back over it with regular color pencils as well? That's correct. Right, okay. So, can, can anybody look at that and give her you know, some advice on, you know, what she could do to get closer to that. You'd have right. to paint the, the, the you, you uh, to me, you would paint the, the bigger shapes. Don't look at the, the little, you paint the bigger shapes, paint the big dark shape, and paint the, paint the big light shape for the biggest leaf, but you've mm -hmm. got, You've got all the details in there instead of the, the shape of the great big leaf that takes up three quarters of the picture. Right. That's good. I did I outline it's clear, but I can I can go back and maybe do the outline darker to make it stand out more. But it's, but you need to do the whole shape of the big leaf. It looks like you've got like four shapes for the big leaf instead of just two shapes. Right. Yeah. Well, 
you know, she's got this really dark shape here, which is another leaf that sits in front. And you can see that. And then, you know, this big leaf, which is really the center, you know, the focal right. point of, of mm -hmm. the photograph. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a couple of things going on because you've got light that's coming from behind it. It's backlit. And when you look at the, the actual piece that you did, you don't have the contrast here. Right. Between these two. You know, okay. this is, if this is going to be this dark, well, this has got to get, get quite a bit darker than you've got it, but not quite as dark as that. Okay. So you, you really got to push your value down, you know, up in here. Would it help if I push the value of the little tiny darker leaves first? Or are you suggesting I go back and do the big leaf first? No, I'd do the big leaf. Okay. Okay. Because... Okay. You know, if you like the value right here mm -hmm. is as dark as this. Mm. Okay. Or pretty close. Yes, when you squint, it is. Yeah. And the same is true with right up here in this corner. You know, they they all get very close in value, right? Um, in here, not quite so much. Okay. And there's really just a, a very slight value difference between the two of them. Okay. Um, so when you, you know, when you're going back in and trying to build more color into this, you know, all of this upper half of this leaf has got mm -hmm. to get darker and closer okay. to this, but not quite there. Okay. Right. And then from there, if, if you get this dark enough, this will become lighter and brighter just because of the contrast. Okay. Right. That um, fun to try to do that. Yeah, so you may not have to do very much to this. You may be fine here. You okay. just haven't gotten this dark enough yet. Okay. And then the same is kind of true back here in the background. See again, you know, and you can get some cooler colors in there, you know, more blue, things like that. But, okay. you know, again, the value has to be darker than what you've got here. Okay. You know, it's, it's all generally too light in value, okay. right? To get, you know, to get the kind of contrast between, you know, these darker areas and this light. And again, you know, the more you begin to push these back in value, the brighter that all of this stuff becomes. Very good. Okay. Hey, Charles. Yeah. Can you get? Can you? She says she has uh, two different types of pencil. Mm -hmm. uh, does that does that limit the layering of the color to get the intensity? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> we don't know that yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm at, going to go back and try to do the watercolor pencils, but I don't know what's happening with that because. I have the regular um, colored pencil over the watercolors. And the reason I did that, I was talking to Charles about it in the beginning, was because it was so light. And I was trying to, to darken it, but using the regular water, regular pencils instead of the watercolor pencils. Right. Now, and like I, I was, you know, in our conversation, what I was saying is, you know, I think if you would have come back with that watercolor pencil a couple of times and right. put a layer down and wet it and then come back in and put more down and wet it you could have built up the value to get it pretty dark i mean obviously you did something right here to get this you know very dark and it looks like it's mainly the watercolor pencil and it's it's you know because it looks fluid and wet and it's not real textural like this area Mm -hmm. so, so my guess is that somewhere in there you can, if you get enough of the watercolor pencil down there, that you, you probably can build up the value and get okay. it as dark as you need it. Okay? Okay. And um, the other suggestion I made to you, and I'm going to share that with everybody, is that maybe before she goes back into this, is that she, 
she does on another sheet of paper, the same kind of paper, uh, she'll do some little squares and she'll try that. You know, she'll put a layer down, wet it, put more of the color down and wet it and keep building it up and seeing how dark and how intense she can get those colors. Um, and then maybe do some squares where she's actually using several different colors of watercolor pencil to kind of mix, you know, mix her own, you know, color mixtures of things, you know, on the surface. You know, right. before she wets it and then wet it. And are, are, you, are you wetting them, uh, Rebecca? Yes, I did. Uh, the reason that I even used those is because they've been on our shelf and were reserved for our little visitors that come and visit us occasionally. And I had never used them as they were intended as watercolor pencils. Yeah. I had never wet them before, but now I have. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. So, so now you're going to take them and get them even wet. Right. Yeah. So the experiment. Yeah, just keep pushing, you know, keep playing with it. Um, now this is uh, from last Thursday, this is at Heritage Park. And so um, when you squint your eye down, and if everybody would, just kind of squint your eye down. And it actually works really nicely. You know, the, back, the background and the middle ground kind of fall back and this uh, more intense, you know, green and not everything pulls forward. And of course you've got this, uh, you know, island of, you know, flowers and plants and things out there in the center. And, um, you know, and it, it kind of sits there, you know, where it needs, needs to sit. Um, so overall, I mean, you know, you've worked that out and gotten the depth in it, you know, that we were talking about and it works pretty well, so. You got any uh, comments about this, Rebecca? Charles, you did a beautiful job on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I did a little bit like right in here. And this, this is acrylic, right? Right, it's acrylic, yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and the thing is, you know, you could take, and you could push some of these even a little bit lighter. And okay. you could certainly even push this lighter than you've got it now. Where? Which one? The foreground. Yes, those were supposed to be shadows. But no, but I'm saying between here and here, you could push this color even lighter. I'm sorry, I didn't catch where your arrow was. <clears throat> Below, oh, yeah. Like oh, from that here to here? Sure. Yes. Yeah, it could uh -huh. even get lighter and more intense. Than, okay. You know, closer to what you've got right here at the edge this kind of very light right. green. You know, most of right. that could actually be that color. Okay. Okay. And it, you know, okay. and again, the lighter you make this, the darker these shadows get. Right. See, it's a matter of time. Right. If you're oh, gonna that, push, that's going to be fun. I'm looking yeah. forward to doing that. Yeah, but if, if you if you're gonna push one thing, it's going to have an effect on everything else. So, yeah, so. Rebecca, you did a really good job on that. It looks so sharp. The image, the <laughs> I thought it was a photograph. That's that Charles did a beautiful job on that for me. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I helped her out. We did a little a bit lot, too. a lot. He oh, should. you and Charles did a really good job on that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I told you, Rebecca, I like it. Thank you, thank you. So I brought it home and I showed it to my husband and he said, my, you are improved. <laughs> and I said, yes, he painted it. He said, oh, that, that makes sense. <laughs> really, okay. Well, let's talk, let's talk about this one now. Okay. okay. And this has improved greatly since the last time we saw it. Mm. Because now those little pots that were kind of all the same, you know, as all the rest of this, you know, now you know exactly where to go. And you've certainly intensified the color and stuff in here. Um, mm -hmm. 
And Rebecca, the only thing I can say to you is we need to give you bigger tubes of paint. Oh, I'll get some. I'll, yeah. I'll get some. Well, I've got plenty of acrylic. You can always um, tell okay. me. You know. But, okay. you know, the only, the only thing about your, your painting is you just need to get more paint on the canvas. Really? Oh, yeah. my word. Okay. Uh, you're, you're watering it down. Right. You know, so thin, you're trying to almost use it like watercolor. Oh, huh. You know, well, I didn't realize that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, this uh, is, uh, oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. So you, when you were talking to me and when we were at the uh, Heritage Center Park, you mm -hmm. said that I needed to concentrate on planes. Would, mm -hmm. you, would you go into that a little bit more, please? Okay. Um, what is a plane? All right, a plane is, um, I looked it up. So if you, if you look at a piece of paper, or just a flat sheet of paper, there's a plane there. If you stand it up on its edge, all you see is a line, and that's not so much a plane as it is a line of dots. Mm -hmm. But when you turn it so that more light catches the surface, and you can see more of the surface, that's a plane. Is that right? Not exactly. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> okay. A plane is just a surface. Right. Um, just a flat surface. Okay. Uh, so like, for example, okay, when we, when we talk about this painting that we're looking at, the ground itself is a plane, you know, because it's a fairly flat area, right? It's not rolling hills and things like that. It's, it's a fairly level area, okay? Uh, the sidewalk or the walkway is a plane. Um, but along with that, you also have planes like on these rounded plant containers, right? Yeah. Um, but you're not seeing just one plane. You're seeing, you know, multiple planes you know maybe you could make eight ten or six you know anything you know basically to separate out how the color and how the value change as it moves around that form okay All right i think that's another thing i probably need to work on explaining uh tomorrow okay as yeah. well you know so how that's, you, that's, how you would break something like that down into separate planes okay um but your trees again when you look at a tree out there uh, in the world and you're trying to paint it a lot of times what you see just like when you're drawing the figure is you see an outline shape right but you gotta kind of get past that shape. You want to see it and realize the shape and how big it is. But after that, you want to break it into different planes and how they're catching light because the tree isn't going to catch light evenly because it's a rounded form for the most part. Right. And so maybe the top of it and one side would or you know one series of planes on it would catch more light you know than the ones toward the bottom right so that mm -hmm. means that as these planes change the light is going to react differently on each one of them right. and I'll, I'll try to show you that tomorrow okay okay or you know think about a house right you know, and if you look at a house and the sunlight is coming, you know, either in the morning or in the evening or afternoon, not coming, you know, straight from the front of it, then one, you know, any, any of the surfaces of the house that aren't facing the sunlight are going to be in shadow, right? Right. Yeah. 
So if you're looking at a house in kind of a three quarter quarter view, you're looking at the corner of the house. Well, one side's going to be light, the other side's going to be in shadow, right? So again, you know, it's just a way of simplifying any kind of form, you know, so that you can understand what the light is doing on it. So a plane is just a flat surface. Remember when we, uh, when we were looking at the human head? Right. And we broke it down into a front plane, top, side right. plane, yes. even the bottom plane? Yes, right. that, that's, that's a good example. Yeah. You know, but you could do it with an arm, you can do it with anything, even a flower. Right. Or a plant. Uh, because again, you know, even like these leaves, right? Mm -hmm. They're not all facing the sunlight. Mm -hmm. See, some are going to face the sunlight, some are going to face away. Some are going to be in shadow, some are going to be in light. And that's what makes it look like an actual plant because all the leaves on a plant are not turned toward the sun. They're just not. Okay. Also, so if you wanted to, if you wanted to um, indicate a plant in front of you that had the front plane, the side planes, and the back planes, the back planes aren't visible, but you know they're there. Mm -hmm. They might appear as shadows through the front view of the plant because you're looking through the plant to the entire plant and then the ones on the side would have a different amount of light than the ones on the front yeah it's it's the plane is going to change or the way you're going to see the plane is with a change in value right on any shape okay, okay. so like when you i don't know i can't see me uh but you know when you look at my face Mm -hmm. And I think I probably have more light coming in from my left side than I do my right. So this side of my face is going to be lit up more than this, right? Right. Okay. So you know that there's a plane right here catching light because it's turned toward the light where the plane over here is not. It's facing a little more away from the light. So it's in shadow. So that's what planes and surfaces do, you know. Um, and the way you see it is, like I said, change in value. But I'm going to do a little work to try to pull something together tomorrow so that, you know, you guys get a better understanding of that. Okay. You know, that and, and I've got my homework cap cut out for me for tomorrow because I got to do Eloise's landscape too. And, and, you know, mix some color so that we get some depth, which is all good. You know, we can, you know, it'd be a good day. All right, so this is Susan, and this is her, uh, her figures, okay? And so, Susan, um, what we were doing here, in fact, well, we could talk about Susan, and you asked about planes, right? We're back. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. So in a in a sense, Susan has broken this arm down into planes. See, she's got one plane here, a front side, and then she's got a side. Uh, she's got a side plane here, and you don't really see the top plane so much here. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole chest is a plane. Mm -hmm. so the hip, she hasn't really broken down into three dimensions, but it's just a simple shape which is what we were doing, by the way. Um, you know, now she didn't carry that down to the legs to find the front plane and the side plane, but it would have been really easy to do that, you know, mm -hmm. with, with these little drawings. But look at the head, see? Again, she's got the two planes, you know, the side plane and the front plane. Now, she would have added value to that, right? You know, she may have lit up, you know, or kept this light and then, you know, tone, you know, put a tone on here, which would have turned that, told you that the light was coming from this direction, right? 
Same thing with this arm. You know, this would have remained lighter. This would mm -hmm. have gotten a little bit darker. Okay? Right. And giving you that idea that the form was turning to right. change the direction. Yeah. So Charles, are you saying that I did this okay? Yay. Yes, in well, a way, I, I am saying I thought it was all wrong. Um, well, you, okay, what we were trying to do was we were trying to find those, those simplified shapes. Now, did, uh -huh. you, did you do that? No. But what you did right was, yeah, you broke that down into planes. So that, that was a great example of, of looking at the plane part of it. Um, you got closer here with what we were trying to do as far as finding a shape for the hips, finding a, a shape for the rib cage, and a shape for the head. Okay. Um, okay. That's what I was saying to you, I think, when I, I looked at these on Friday, is that we're, we're trying to find those three shapes and how they move in relationship to each other. But in a way, you know, I, again, you kind of broke this down into, rather than into those three shapes, you kind of broke it into planes. Okay. You know, okay. that that's certainly a valuable way of looking at the figure and would certainly help you if you're trying to figure out where the light and the shadow are, you know, by understanding the planes of it. Yeah. So, you know. But you also did what I asked you to. You know, you found the long line, and then you used that as kind of a framework to build those parts on top of it, right? And that's fine. Okay. So you you, you know you got something out of that, okay? And then and then when you went to your long drawing, and let's blow this up a little bit. Okay. When you went into your longer drawing, your proportions and, you know, as far as getting what the figure was doing, you know, I, you seem to see and understand that, you know, pretty well. You got the relationship to where the, the arm was bent and, you know, placed, you know, on the chest, this arm coming uh -huh. down in front, you know, I mean, Think, think back, you know, even a month ago, you know, when you were drawing figures, this is a lot better, okay? So, okay. so you're beginning to really kind of pull, you know, all those little different bits of information together and being able to manage and know what to do with it. And so that's great, okay? Well, thank you, okay. <laughs> I thought I had a disaster, a couple of oh. disasters. No, no. Um, no, you didn't have any disasters. It's fine, you know. And like I said, you know, again, you know, even though, you know, you didn't find, like in here, you didn't really find the three separate parts, but you saw the gesture, right? You saw the proportion. You kind of broke the head down into a simplified shape. You just kind of unified the hip and the, the rib cage here. Uh, and all you had to do is like, you know, if you have the shape here and a shape there for the hip, you know, you, you would have been on track uh, with, with this one. But again, you didn't totally miss everything. You know, you're seeing the length, the proportion, the gesture of things, you know, that's, uh, that's a lot better than, you know, like I said, even a month ago. So. So you're, doing, okay. you're, you're on the I don't feel so bad about it. Okay. What? I missed that. What did you say? Oh, I, I don't feel as bad about it anymore after hearing oh. what you're saying. Yeah, you don't you don't need to feel bad about it at all. Yeah. No, you're you know, you're making a lot of progress, you know. And when you go back and you're drawing you know, just sketching and drawing your figures and things like that. You know, you're beginning to okay. get a lot of this 
you know, uh, stuff that we've talked about and it's showing up in the drawings. So that's good. That's what we want to have happen. Oh, uh, let's see. And, well, and guess what? That's kind of the end of it all. Okay, that's all the work we had. How are we doing time wise? Okay, we got about 30 more minutes. All right, so I want to talk about something. Okay. I want to, I want to, I want to talk about, you know, the good, bad, and the ugly of, of, you know, painting portraits. Okay. And in particular, I want to talk about that. Okay. Everybody recognize what that is, right? That's the, that's the painting you entered in a, an exhibit, right? Right. Okay. So this is a, a 40 by 60 oil paint. Okay. And it was a commission piece and Claudia, Lang Pitts, who joins us uh, rather regularly, uh, commissioned me to do this. And this is her brother. And uh, I actually went to Chicago to meet this man. And I spent the day with him. Um, and then I shot some photographs, but I did a lot of sketches and a lot of drawing. And more than even doing sketches and drawing, I just watched him. You know, I watched the way that he moved, um, the gestures, the expressions on his face, you know, as he talked to me throughout the day. And um, the other thing that I was watching is I was watching the interior of that church and how it changed through the day and how the light changed. And so after spending the day with him and doing, you know, probably 20 or 30 uh, little thumbnail drawings and sketches, things like that, uh, with my time with him. I came back and when I got back to Atlanta, uh, I took the photography and stuff and I began to sort of piece things together and try to figure out, you know, a composition and how I, you know, how I was going to actually go about painting him. And I looked at at least eight or 10 different options. Um, like for example, one of my options, and this was an earlier option that I decided against, was to crop. Sure. Yes. It looked to me like you keep adding things. No. To paint. No? No, I haven't added anything to it. Um, well, the window look, and the other one look, or well, the other one is the picture. A, a photograph. No, no, the, yeah. Anyway, I'm explaining kind of the process of this, but mm -hmm. you know, one of my first options was to crop in on this, really to just his upper body, right? And I thought about that. That would have been a much easier thing for me to do. But what I felt like I was missing from that was a lot of the environment that he was in. And in, in a way, after meeting him and talking to him, um, you know, I got the sense that this painting, you know, I mean, that would have made a nice painting just in itself, okay? But you wouldn't have gotten the the sense of the place and kind of the environment that he works in um unless you had that you know and, and actually had some of the feeling of the interior of the church itself and so it, it became a much more involved project because not only did you have to do the figure but you had to get all of the elements you know, the different tables and, you know, the stained glass window and the architecture and things, you know, in, and, you know, even the uh, platform, you know, in the church. Um, whoops. Okay. You had to get all of that, you know, into the paint. And so it, it became a much bigger and a much more 
involved in a longer process than, you know, I had maybe initially thought. <laughs> and, um, and that's, that's why it really took me, uh, well, from the time we started this painting, we had the pandemic in between. And there were periods, long periods of time that I didn't work on. Um, and quite frankly, I got, I got to several points along the way where I was kind of stuck. And I really didn't know how I was gonna like resolve some of the issues that I was, that I was dealing with. Um, and so, you know, I have to kind of walk away for a little while, think about it, kind of experiment. Um, I ended up doing uh, probably at least five or six different color roughs. You know, after I had this composition, you know, I played with the color and making like the background darker or kind of uh, what I ended up with was the, the background ended up as sort of a middle value. <clears throat> and then um, the left side ended up as a light value. And then the foreground was generally mid tone to dark mm. and had sort of the widest range of contrast. Uh, but, you know, I played with where I put those in, in these different compositions, you know, so I could see, you know, in the end, you know, kind of what this would look like. And um, it took a while to work out because it's, there's a lot of little moving parts in there. <laughs> so yeah. it was, it was a bit of a challenge, um, even for me. And, you know, it was not an easy painting to paint. So. Oh, yeah. I think uh, the the view you chose and a lot of the elements in this painting kind of tell a story, tell his story more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's why, you know, I felt like I couldn't leave him out, you know, because, you know, the robe and, you know, like this, this little, uh, I forget what they call this. Is it, is it a kente cloth? Something like that. It's a glove. Oh, maybe. Yes. Um, you know, that by itself kind of told the story. Mm -hmm. But not really. You know, I mean, it, it suggested something. But, you know, having the uh, offering plate, having the open Bible back here, having this, mm -hmm. this old worn Bible that he uses all the time, um, and the stained glass window, and even this plaque up here. You know, those were all kind of important elements, you know, to the painting. And, uh, you know, cropping it in tighter would have made it simpler and easier to do. That emblem on his robe also indicates his denomination, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What yeah. denomination is that one? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's... Uh, the Church of God in Christ, is that right? Something like that, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's... Uh, yeah, I have to get the name of the church. It, it's sort of crazy. Pentecostal. Some kind of Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. Could it be um, Episcopalian? No. Uh, with, with the clerical uh, collar that he has? No, no. It's 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 a. It's not the Baptist church, but it's sort of. Oh, it's no, no, it's no Pentecostal. Yeah, it's it's like a very conservative black church. Yeah. yeah. Kind of thing. Charles, uh, I love the, I love the expression you got in his eyes and his face, and he's just about to tell us something. I wish it, I wish I knew what it was. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. he was he's, telling me something. He's telling <laughs> Charles something. Yeah, he was telling Charles something. Yeah. So it's got to be a good painting, or else he wasn't going to hang it up. Okay. Directly behind him is that a mirror, or is that a room that has another door in it? Yeah, actually, yeah, this this door right here leads back into like a little hall area. And right. this door comes out into an area. Whoop, you can't really see it. Look back there. Um, right back behind him is there's two things. Uh, mm -hmm. There's the space like right back here for the choir. And then right. right behind that, if the choir clears out, there's a space for them to do baptisms. Right. Yeah, the little pool is back there that, you know, 
when they're when they're doing right. baptisms and things. So people would it's come in the door and up there. And, huh? And it, it's called a baptismal font. Yeah. At any rate. And the, the, the small table behind, it has a container or something. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's got sort of like the, you know, the offering plate. Yeah. The communion, communion the vessels. Communion. The elements of communion in it. Yeah, yeah. So they would have like the the little wafers for the bread or whatever, or it could be where they put the little glasses of grape juice or wine. You know, if you want. It is. Yeah. Um, but this surface right here was mirrored. You know, this was not like an open cabinet. It was actually a mirrored front, so it kind of reflected. You know the floor and everything inside. Mm. Um, oh, that's interesting. Huh. Yeah, it's like you know when I started diving into this, there was a lot more there than you know I had ever sort of anticipated. <laughs> you know, so uh, <clears throat> but you know in the end, um, I think I figured out there's well over three hundred hours in this kind oh, of. Well, I believe it. You know, well over Charles, the, even the wood on the um, uh, pulpit is so well done. It's oak. You can tell that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, and again, notice that I, I took the time to really put wood grain on this, and then I kind of indicated a little bit on this, but then when I got back here, I just sort of simplified it. Again, as as things got further away, I put less detail. And as, as they got further away from the focal point, which is really, again, right in here, um, again, I put, I try to simplify it and put less detail. And the reason for that is, you know, if, if I had put wood grain all over this, then it flattens everything out. So, so so, uh, since this was such a um, task, I was wondering and thinking that the old masters who painted those huge paintings of uh, daily life or mm -hmm. ideas oh. or beliefs they had, they, they apparently spent a lot of time getting the details as, and also make th making them look realistic. And oh, also, right. you mentioned something about the background was uh, the different values in the different parts of the room, how mm -hmm. they changed. Right. Yeah, so, as, as you sat there, you know, throughout the day, yeah, the light changed radically. Um, and just, you know, again, you know, just figuring out, okay, what's really going to work in the painting? And the one thing I, you know, I had kind of thought, you know, earlier on in the day that I would have this stained glass window lit up, you know, and then all of the rest of this kind of darker. So the light was coming in really from this side. But in the end, uh, I ended up with more light, you know, on this wall and it coming in from the other stained glass window on the other side. Um, mm -hmm. And, and so then, you know, I could darken this down to push it back and let this, you know, this wall be in light, the spacing wall and this wall, you know, are catching the main parts of the light as well as this piece of furniture, this side of, you know, the, uh, the podium, and then all of the right side of him. And then the the walls that were facing perpendicular to the windows all kind of fell into mid ten, so they got darker, you know, and there was more shadow, and, and so it helped kind of describe the form, you know, and the planes. See, here you go, Rebecca, a changing plane. Why is this lighter and why is this darker? Well, because they're facing two different directions, right? There's more light on this side, less light on this side. Makes sense? Makes great sense. There you go. Okay. So, <clears throat> but yeah, this, you know, 
I'm, I'm glad this made it into the show. Um, you know, I'm, you know, in retrospect, you know, it's like every other painting I've ever done. You know, when I think about it uh, long term, and if I had to do it again, would I do it maybe a little differently? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I would. Um, you know, but in the process of doing this, you know, I learned a lot, you know, in the process of, you know, of doing it, you really figured a lot of different things out, um, which will help me in other pain, you know, coming down the line. So there's, there's, there certainly are a lot of clean, straight edges in this painting. Oh, yeah. How, how did you do that? <laughs> uh, it's called a mall stick. Okay, well, is that all? Is that a ruler? Huh? Is it like a ruler? No, it's, it's like a, a round dowel and it has a ball on the end of it. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. I know what that is. Yeah, it's called a mall stick. Yeah. And, um, and you use it, you know, when you're doing architecture and, you know, hard edges. Because even though I can do a fairly straight line with a brush in my arm, um, mall sticks work better. They, they get things generally straighter. So, okay. yeah, by a long They're way. very big. Just take, a, just take a long stick and put a, um, a wad of paper at the end of it and wrap it up with a soft cloth. Yeah, That's soft what I did. And, and masking tape or something, you know, at the bottom to keep it in place. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, you've got yourself a mall stick. I, I, I made one and I use it all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a piece of, uh, of leather on the on the end of it, mm -hmm. uh, stuffed yeah. with paper towels. I think underneath that. Okay. It's a shame. Yeah. Any anything that's kind of soft, um, the smaller you can make that ball, the better. <laughs> because if you, if you have a lot of loose cloth hanging off of it, and you want to put it on the edge of the painting, mm -hmm. and you've got a lot of oil paint. You know, at the edge of the painting, it's gonna it's gonna get covered in oil paint. So, uh, so yeah, you want to make kind of the contact area as small as you can. Um, but uh, you know, in this particular case, you know, you had you had to have a mall stick. You know, and I actually had to make a longer one. You know, so that I had something long enough to do you know, these, these long straight edges and things like that. Um, and you can draw it out, you know, with a, like a long metal ruler and stuff. But then, you know, when you're trying to paint it over a big, over a really long line like that, you're going to get some wobbling, you know, you just are, you know. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, you're probably looking at, probably a, a good 20, 24 inches right there. You know, just from the corner here down to here. And so, uh, you know, trying try to make a, a long straight line that long. Yeah. Charles, the types of shows that you enter, are they, do they reject some works even though uh, you follow the uh, rules or, or yeah, what? Absolutely. Well, I, had, I had submitted six pieces for this show. This is the only one I got in. Well, what were they looking for? I mean, of your six pieces, I'm pretty sure you probably followed the uh, the rules, right? Well, okay. Um, the six pieces I submitted, it's it's a jury show. So okay. out of, well, I submitted six pieces overall. They probably had close to three to five thousand pieces submitted. So the uh, they judge them before had they accept through. them. Right. Yeah, the judge had to go through, and you know they've only got so much wall space, mm -hmm. and so they had a general number of paintings that they would, you know, basically judge into the show. Uh, and then, of course, you know, after he picked, you know, like. 
let's say it's 120 paintings on average, they would have to go back and look at the sizes of them. And it's like, okay, can we get these 120 paintings hung on the wall here? And if a lot of the paintings that he picked were particularly large paintings, then you might have to cut out, you know, another, you know, another group of paintings until, you know, you get it down to where it will actually fit, you know, something that they can actually show. So it's not based on your skill or their preferences as to your, uh, the picture is based on the space. Well, it's based on both. It's the first thing is what are the best pieces according to this judge? And after let's, let's say that they say, okay, we want you to do, you know, we want you to come up with 120 paintings, you know, from, you know, like first place down to 120. So he gives them that. And then they sit down with the judge. They look at the sizes of those and they figure out how, you know, how many of them they can actually get on the wall. I would also be curious, Charles, to see the ones that didn't make it. Just um, to kind yeah, of- Yeah, well, we would all love to see that. <laughs> you mean, you mean, the, you mean the six your, that I submitted that didn't make it? Yes. Oh, um, sure. Yeah, I can, I can do that. Actually, let me see. Maybe we can do that now. Let me see if I can hey, find them. Um, Charles, do you, um, do you participate in the Don Woody Fine Art Association? No, not generally, I don't. Um, they have now an exhibit at the Sandy Spring Library. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, now I've gone over there and I've done demonstrations and I've talked to them on a couple of different occasions. Well, it's four. Five, four. Three, one. You did a nice job on that foreshortened hand. You're gonna to have to show us how to do that. That oh, yeah. left hand. <laughs> All right. Um, so these are the these are the pieces. Let me see. All right. Stop sharing. Okay. And start sharing again. All right, so these are the pieces um, Whoa. Mm -hmm. that I, I submitted, okay? There was this one, there was this one, this one. I didn't submit that, that was the other year, let's see. All right, wait a minute, no, I, I don't think that these were all the ones that I submitted. These, are, these were kind of like my first round of things that I was thinking about submitting. Let me go back. Well, I know where you did this painting. Yes, I know you do. You were there. Oh, I recognize that. I, I did was there. Painting. We all did that painting. <laughs> no, no, I was all there. Did, you all did different versions. Right. Of that yeah. painting. Yes. Exactly. I did the worst. <laughs> you did the worst? No, yeah. I did not do the worst. All right, yeah, so these, okay, let's see. Um, all right. All right, so these, these are the three other than, you know, this piece that I submitted. Sure. All right, so there was this piece. I submitted, there was this one. And this one. Along with, you know, the other paint. And that's what I submitted to the show. 
And so they picked the bigger penny. I mean, they're all X penny too. I don't. Yeah. Well, you know. Were they oversized or were they? Um, no. Were they no, uh, like this. This is about a twenty-four by twenty-four, so it's not a real big painting. Uh, this one is. I want to say it's uh, probably like twenty by twenty-four, uh, or maybe twenty by thirty. No, where you saw this cat? Actually, I saw him at the Atlanta Zoo. He's a, a clouded leopard. Uh huh. Leopard. Yes. Yeah, and he, uh, he, he was up there posing for me one day when I was out at the zoo. I was out painting the pandas. And, uh, he's, he's happy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he was perfectly happy where he was. He was having a good day. Yeah. And he just kind of propped himself up there on that log and, you know, posed for me. So. Um, and then this piece. And again, this is about a 20 by 30. So that and the uh, leopard are about you know, pretty close to the same size. So. I, was, I was just curious. Um, thank you for yeah. sharing. Yeah, so those are the pieces that didn't do. Yeah. So. What are you going to do, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just happy. Really what yeah, you I'm, minister you did was a 40 by 60. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. What do you mean, six? That's a big uh, canvas. Yes, it is. It's a very large canvas. Yeah. Yeah. There's. Yeah. Nothing small about it. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's it. It took. It took a lot of paint, and it took a lot of time. So. Very time consuming. Yes. We had yeah. a lot of little things in there. There were. You know. But in the end. I feel I feel pretty good about the painting. So yeah, you should. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I like the way it turned out. Mm -hmm. And the important thing is that the client was happy. So there you go. That's yeah. always that's always the first priority is that the client. <laughs> so if you're gonna do oh, it, yeah, if you're gonna do okay. commission work, you know, that's at the end of the day, you know. That's really the only thing that matters. So, um, anyway, so that's all I got for today. Anybody got anything they want to ask or anything um, we need to nope. cover before you? I'm, I'm just verifying that you're going to do the YouTube thing on Monday, of, right? So, um, you mean the uh, the evening of the art show? Yes. From this year. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to chase Sharita down right now okay. as to... And Charles, I'm going to mention I've got a doctor's appointment on Friday morning, so I probably won't get in. I, don't, I doubt I'll be back. Is there some way that I can email you to get the pictures that get done in sure. the class? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just let me know and I'll, I'll send them, you know, directly to you and then you can work from there. Okay. And that okay, that goes for the rest of you. You know, if there's if there are images and things that you want, you know, to practice and work from from any of the classes, just let me know and I'll send them to you. Okay. It's not right. The PowerPoint presentation yeah, is the one that you're going to show on Friday. Is that the one you're talking about? Well, it's Monday. Monday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In uh, inspiration for art. Okay. Yeah, I was going to try to replay. You know uh, the Zoom uh, presentation that we did with everybody's work, including yours, right? <laughs> did Did you see that? I mean, you were there. No, one. I saw part of it. Uh, I was, yeah, I saw part of it. I just didn't see it all. Okay. All right. Yeah. So is that, is that we were watching it on the small screen. Yeah, is <laughs> it, we're watching on a is telephone. It, is it posted on YouTube already? Um, I don't know whether she's got it up there or not. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I sent her an email again today asking her, if you've, if you've got it on the drive, where did you put it? <laughs> because I want to download it so I can show it to everybody. Okay? 
So okay. hopefully I'll get a response back between, you know, now and Friday, and I can download it and have it ready for Monday, okay? So. Right. All right. Thank you. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for coming. You know, have yourself a great interesting. rest of the day. Uh, tomorrow in the morning, like I said, I gotta, I've got my homework cut out for me. I've got to try to explain planes to Rebecca, and I've got to, you know, do a little color mixing and, and push and pull some space uh, for Eloise. And Eloise, if you would please go ahead and send me that uh, image. I did already. Oh, okay. I sent the photos. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. You don't need the painting, do you? No. Mm -mm. Well, I've got, a, I've got what you did. Okay. All right. Okay already and yeah i just need the photos the reference photo okay all right, all right everybody thank you bye see bye. you bye. bye thank you have a great evening you too thank you